From the City of Angels, you are listening to the James Salos Our Media Podcast. On this episode, we're going to talk about some pop culture, so let me strike the music and I'll meet you on the other side. And welcome to the James Salazar Media Podcast, where you get your weekly dose of pop culture, politics, and futurism. I am the formerly mentioned James Salazar, a.k.a. The Media. Um, how's everyone doing? As for me, I'm doing fine. Just came back from Mexico. It's always It always seems like I'm coming back from somewhere. You'd probably be right about that, but um, yeah. Definitely had fun going across the border, eating some Mexican food, good seafood out there, having fun, drinking cervezas, and yeah. Today I want to talk about some TV shows, TV shows. I'm going to ruin it for some people, so please, please... Spoiler alert for, I'm going to name them, uh, Good Doctor, Prodigal Son, The Rookie, Lucifer, Debris, and Jupiter Legacy. And maybe a couple other things. Um, but other than that, I'm doing fine. Let's get into it. Now, I watched The Good Doctor. It's about a guy with autism who is a brilliant diagnosis and surgeon. Uh... But he has autism, and part of him being brilliant is that his autistic mind focuses on medical issues where he has difficulty associating with people. And we get into the fourth season finale. Now, this one was a little bit of a whimper. Um, the one be the the one of the seasons before that, one of the major. Doctors died out of the blue, so that was always interesting. Whenever they kill off a character, I'm always interested. I'm always intrigued because to see how the other characters react to the absence of that character and how they write that. So that was exciting. Now, this one, they were dealing with major issues. Uh, and a lot of it, and the finale ended with relationships, um, that was the theme of it. You know, they end up going to Guatemala and they're going to do 10. They're going to get do 10 surgeries out there. And they got to pick which people are going to get the surgeries and which people they're going to turn away. And they're going to try to do the best ones because when they do these 10 and they do them great, they the Guatemala hospital gets more money as opposed to trying to fix everybody little because you know you want more bang for your buck if you're going to give out money so that you do these 10 grand surgeries they're like oh you're doing all that more money so they bring out those people those doctors to that area and there's a couple people are dealing with stuff sean and his girlfriend they had a miscarriage and his girlfriend's working through that with knowing that the good doctor who has autism has very little to give in emotional support tries to be there tries to does it tries to navigate that so they're dealing with that there's two doctors that got too close and now they're separated and they sort of in this f season finale acknowledge things and um one of the major doctors who's a mentor tours the character Sean, the uh, doctor with autism, um, just basically um, is having issues with his relationships. One of the other doctors, he has a relationship breaking up, and he started attracted to one of the nurses in Guatemala. So, uh, and then you have one of the major show people, who who besides Sean has the most drama, Claire. She ends up staying in Guatemala after these surgeries. Sean and his girlfriend, she asks him 
to marry her, that relationship between the two doctors uh, get acknowledged and they come together. And the doctor who's dealing with separation realizes um, that he might want to still save his marriage. So a lot of emotional relationship stuff in the season finale. Um, nothing really impactful other than Sean, the guy with autism, with the girlfriend who just had a miscarriage. She realized that, hey, I do love you. And you're enough. So therefore, let's get married. And he automatically says yes. So it was an okay. I mean, if I was going to get the potatoes, the five potatoes, it's a good show. So it gets three potatoes right off the bat. But a season finale has got to be big, better. So therefore, it gets three and a half because I just, you know, it was an okay. It seemed like a regular episode as opposed to the finale. The only thing that was like, oh, was that the major character of Claire and the actress are both leaving the show, so they wrote her out right there. And there's a nice touching moment between her and Sean because they were both there in the beginning of the show and um, an acknowledgement of their relationship. Heartwarming. But other than that, and that gives it maybe a four potato, but three and a half. It's not that it was bad acting, it was bad. I just expected more. So three and a half potatoes. For the good doctor. Now the prodigal son. I love this show. It's about a. Uh, profiler who works. And consults with the NYPD. On murders. Who has a history. Because his father. Is a serial killer called the doctor. And. Um, he's always. The doctor, the, his father is in an insane asylum for danger, dangerous people. And he always calling him from his cell because I don't, he somehow gets that luxury. And he's always bothering him, manipulating him, you know, trying to uh, manipulate his sister who's in the same predicament. And it's pretty good. It's a really good show. I like it. But we got to the season finale. And finally, in this in this season finale, the last... And the season finale starts about two episodes before the final. Where guest star... Um, Catherine Zeta-Jones guest stars as someone who is wacky. And here comes some spoilers... Um, she ends up kill the uh, surgeon ends up escaping from the insane asylum, a sane asylum. But the crazy doctor that was working in the insane asylum um, kidnaps him because she suspected that he was going to run. But she's crazy, and then she apprehends. The profiler and a lot of hijinks ensues. So, at the end of the show, uh, Martin Whitley, the doctor, the serial killer, gets away. Does not, um, does not get captured, gets rescued by his son, but does not get captured, but in fact kidnaps his son, and they're off in a boat into the horizon. So it was a very good, this interesting. Um, you felt that the uh, good doctor was, not the good doctor, <laughs> the doctor, the killer, the murderer, um, was going to turn himself in and tr and because he tried to tell him that he's changed. And in fact, 
We know he hasn't changed. He's just looking for an opportunity, an opportunity to escape. He does and still his son. So that's where the season finale ends. And I've always liked this show. And the show doesn't disappoint. The acting's phenomenal. And the ending is intriguing because now he is forcefully on the lam with his father. So I'll give that a four potatoes. Four full potatoes. Um, there was moments there that I thought were interesting. Um, but a five potato, you know, that's got to be like crazy good. And it wasn't crazy good, but it was good enough. So four potatoes for the prodigal son. Finale. Now we got the rookie. Now the rookie has Nathan Fillion. And I follow his career through um, Firefly to um, Castle. And now into the rookie. Where he plays a older... Um, police officer, trainee, trying to become a full-fledged officer, and all, and he's an old man, but he tends to get into the most excitement. Now, it's not that he's like badass or anything; it's just that he's learning and um, he has integrity. So it's a really good show, and I like the character. And his adversities trying to become a pol LAPD officer so late in life. And we see the development of all the characters in it. Of who People who were rookies with him. And, um, and there's another Starship captain in there from Dark Matter. Uh, the girl. The captain of that, she's in the same show. So there's two starship captains from uh, sci-fi realm into The Rookie. Now, the finale was okay. Overall, I like the TV show. I like the circumstances that they're in. Um, there's some woke situations in there that I don't think they're too heavy-handed. More of uh, social issues. Um, like, um, you know, there's a racist cop. And he's not really racist to his own. It's more of a prejudice cop to be, and more prejudice towards black people, even though he has colleagues that are black that are will defend him. And it's more about the the gang mentality of the LAPD protecting bad cops, and it deals with that issue. And I think it deals with that issue in a good way. It shows strength. And, um, and character of the people who are, and the realities facing those situations, and how one can say to themselves, you know, you just got to work through the system, work your way up, and it gets better, or someone who takes a stand, and uh, not this position of weakness. And... I liked it. I I don't mind its woke issues there. And I don't think it's a woke issue. I think it's an everybody issue. I mean, you can go online right now and watch police abuse the rights of their citizens of all colors, of all races. And it's aggravating. And it's annoying. And it's disappointing. And you want better from the people who you pay through your taxes. We expect more from them. Like I've always said, if you want that level of responsibility, you gotta, if you want that level of respect, you gotta take that level of responsibility. And that should be for everything. Anything where people say you should respect this and we are as our taxpayers like teachers, I'll say to all of them, if you want that respect for teachers, you got to take the same responsibility. 
You can't have relinquish all your responsibility but have the same amount of respect for cops and teachers. I'm sorry. We don't live in that world. And I don't want to live in that world where you can produce the minimum, but you want the maximum respect from us. No, you got to produce the maximum result. You decided to take this job. Now there's certain responsibilities that you have towards society because you took that job. And we're going to expect a certain result. And that's just it. I'm digressing. The Rookie's a good show. The finale was okay. Nothing really happened. It was, it was all before the finale, all these major situations, and it all came out nice. But it ended up was a pregnant cop who's dealing with a narco getting kidnapped at the uh, eve of her wedding. So that was the major season finale. So, yeah, we're waiting for that. I'll give it a three and a half potato. It was nothing spectacular. It was almost obvious. If they killed her, that would have been a good season finale. If they killed that cop that was pregnant, that was getting married, that would have been a great season finale. I would be sad that the character is gone. It's a cool character. A very strong character. Good representation of Latin people. But it would have been like, holy shit, if they killed her. But they didn't. They just stole her. And I don't foresee that it's going to end with her death. Because that would be gruesome. That would be over. That would be Game of Thrones ish. I do not expect that from primetime TV. So, but overall, three and a half, three and a half potatoes for the rookie. Now, Lucifer, this was a series finale, finally. It was on, I forget, um, Channel 11 or a Fox, and then it. Netflix bought it, and they decided to give it two more seasons, which we appreciate. And um, it ended interesting. Um, it ended with God coming on the scene and retiring and l leaving um, Lucifer, Michael, and um, all these other angels fighting for the throne of God. Now, this was a four potatoes. Um, it got a little campy towards the end and didn't really explain things. I mean, it's funny. I'm glad they ended it. Uh, here's a spoiler in one, two, three. Lucifer becomes God. Ultimately, because he sacrifices himself in heaven to bring back his love back to earth. And somehow that's why he becomes God. And he ends up beating Michael for the role. And he just has his fist in the air like he won. And, <laughs> and that was at end credits. And it was all done at the the uh, forum in Los Angeles. They decided to fight there, which was weird. And so, now that I'm thinking about it, how it ended, the only good thing about it is that Lucifer became God. But other than that, how it was all... And up until the battle, it was... Interesting, intriguing, where they're going to go with this because it didn't look like Lucifer was going to get the votes of <laughs> the votes of his fellow angels to win the role to become God. And somehow in the beginning of the show, you see all these uh, cholos going to jail in a bus and the bus goes over the 
cliff and then somehow those cholos come back at the end to fight with lucifer i didn't get it <laughs> i was like why don't you bring all the people from hell and you just bring the cholos from and the gangsters from the bus that crashed i i didn't get it i was like all right and they ended up all dying and the angels end up kicking their ass because because they're not celestial beings they're cholo so what did you expect to happen so lucifer basically loses the fight but um and his girlfriend ends up getting killed and she goes to heaven he goes to heaven and get her down because he can't deal with life without her and he takes off the ring that keeps him eternal or keeps all humans eternal he takes it off he explodes she comes back to life on Earth, which Michael's going to kill her again, but no, he comes back. So it was just weird. It was a weird ending. And it was cheap, che a little cheesy and a little campy. And maybe they ran out of money. But the more I think about it, the more I'm articulating it, yeah, it's more like a three potato. The only good part, what keeps it from being actually a two and a half, to two potato is that Lucifer becomes God. That's it. So that's what I think about the season series finale of Lucifer. Could have been done better. Uh, they could have had a moment where he's talking. Like if I would have wrote it, and if I, this goal here, if I was going to write it, you can have that cheesy campy fight. But you should see him on the throne of God dealing with subjects and him coming back with his campy one-liners and with Chloe behind his back like in an angel suit or whatever or like with a halo and um, Dan, because Dan ends up going to hell and he's a great guy and they never really resolve that issue because he, he everybody expected him to go to heaven but he wasn't there, he, he's in hell. And he, he should be on the other side. And they totally, uh, yeah, I'm just, if I would have wrote it, I just would have had him on the throne of God making decisions, saying, do I have to, you know, some can't be lying, like, do I have to do this forever? And, you know, it ended there. But it was just this cheesy flaming sword by the Colosseum, the famous part of the Colosseum that goes like these arches. Like, I won credits. I was like, what? So, yeah. Three potatoes. Three potatoes. Could have been better. Could have been better. And it gets sad because, like I said, Lucifer becomes God. And the show over, and all everything built up to that moment was good and intriguing. So three potatoes for Lucifer. Now debris, new show. I watched this with my family and it just had this old model. The show itself is like a two to me, but I watched it with my family. I mean it's an intrigue it's intriguing storyline, but it ended up being the the, the piece of debris of the week, like the freak of the week in like superhero shows, you know, they're dealing with this person who has superpowers and you got to defeat him. And, and it seems impossible to, to defeat until the end of the show, you find a way to defeat it. And, you know, like Flash or Smallville, you know, they call them the freak of the week shows. You know, you got to go through maybe in a 20 episode season about 12 of those are freak of the weeks and then the other ones are what moves the story along well for debris it was the same thing it's just they found a new piece of debris and it did a special kind of trick that was never done before and Next week was a new debris, and the story moves so slowly along. 
except for two episodes, two, two episodes that were really, really great. And it had to do with um, time and different dimensions. It was well written. It was the best part of the whole season. And um, it's, it should have just taken that those two episodes about um, time distortions and trying to fix a broken timeline that's cracking um, reality and meshing in different realities and how many times they ha- and it keeps on changing it keeps on adjusting and and all these different um dimensions are merging together and it's causing a big problem and they find a way out of it which is it, it's really good writing that those two episodes the rest of them not impressed N- none of it really moved the story it was just like oh and at the end of every episode, you would see, like, this partially put together ship. Off the many debris of the ship, they find all over the world. And a lot of, a lot of episodes just to get to a certain place. And we haven't really gone any farther with all the episodes that I watched except for those two, was entertaining. So other than those two episodes that were a continuation, dealing with the same subject, because it was pretty well written, could have been a movie within itself, other than the rest of it, it was pretty boring. And it went nowhere. And the characters are, are interesting, but not too interesting. Not for me to... Watch them look. Oh, look at this debris. It makes people disappear. Oh, look at this debris. It makes people, um, metabolism go fast. And look at this debris. It makes people emotional. Whatever. It was like, okay, I'm over it. It doesn't move along. So I don't particularly want it to come back. And I'm not going to particularly watch it when it comes back. And I might watch the very first episode and they got to hit me hard. I don't even know if it's approved for a second season. I wouldn't have approved it. It's not good enough. But if they do get it approved and people are asking for it and they have the numbers, they got to hit hard on the new one, the season premiere, to get me to watch again. But I tell you, even if they hit me hard with a good and well-written premiere, they got to keep it up. You know, we in this... Netflix society, Netflix doesn't have these burner episodes that really have nothing to do. They don't need to do 20 episodes for a network. They, they just fine tune it. Every episode is consequential. Every episode is important and it moves along the story. That's what Netflix, it is, it has created better writing and not waste great ideas on burner shows but you can put them in there in like two episodes to advance the story and it doesn't waste writers material it's good writing all the ideas got to be fit in eight episodes or eight to 12 episodes, 13, but not 22. You're just going to have some shows that are coming out of your ass just to get the product out there. And it lessens the product. And this is the problem, I think, with debris. So that's what I think. Uh, the season finale, I don't even remember it. I think um, the girl gets, her father betrays her because science takes a higher, it's more important than her.
basically. That's what it was. And last but not least, Jupiter Legacy. Now, I guess a lot of people didn't like it. And, but before we get into that, let's do a commercial. Hey everyone, this is James Salazar with James Salazar Media, and I want to talk to you about Legal Shield. Legal Shield is the ability to have a lawyer on retainer for just twenty four ninety five a month. They are a service that spans the whole country. Now you know, people who have lawyers have different results than people who don't. When you have a lawyer, doors open, things get dismissed. It's just the truth. And for the longest time, only the rich were able to have a lawyer on retainer. But now you can too. You know, about 25 years ago, I was presented with Legal Shield. And it was $24.95 a month then. But it didn't cover very much. So I passed on the opportunity, thinking it was a great idea. I wish it covered more. But now... Because the advent of technology and smartphones, now they have 4 million customers all paying twenty four ninety five a month. Now, collectively, lawyers get paid what they're worth, and we are able to get access to top quality representation for a minimum price. It, it only, like, covered tickets. And that was about it. But now it covers personal legal advice, unlimited number of issues, letters, call made on your behalf, contract and document reviews up to 15 pages, IRS audit assistance, civil trial defense, family and domestic services, and document uploading. All this for $24.95. Let me tell you something. If you need a lawyer, it's already too late. You're going to pay through the nose. Legal is like taking insurance that everything in life may not go your way. Just like we have insurance for cars just in case we get into a crash. Because the po there is a likely uh, possibility in your life that you're going to drive a car, you're going to get into an accident. Same thing with the law. You might do everything right, and you might find yourself on the wrong side of the law. And this is insurance for that. We pay hundreds of dollars for car insurance. We should do this for your freedom. So, my friends, I'm on a one-man campaign to get everyone legal representation in this country. There's also a business opportunity that you can be a part of just go into the show notes and press the link. It will link you to purchase Legal Shield and a business opportunity. But at the end of the day, my friends, we want everyone to have the same legal representation that other people have, that only the rich used to have. You can have a lawyer for $24.95 on retainer, representation, and peace of mind. Legal Shield, your best friends in time of trouble. Okay, so Jupiter Legacy. Now, this TV show, it didn't do as good as Netflix intended. It's by a certain writer, but there's something about people. They get too picky. They are looking for it to look like either DC or Marvel. And because it doesn't look that way and the characters are not familiar or some of the characters are too familiar, they poo-poo it. But I thought it was a great story. It was different. Um, it went to two different time zones, the early 1920s to, to a little bit in our future. And it talks about how these people got powers. And um, the issues they're dealing with today. And there's a lot of mysteries of what went on. It kept me intrigued. I liked the acting. Acting. I didn't think anything was wrong with it. I liked their characters who they picked. Um, usually, 
um, what's his name? The actor, um, Dune, Dune Ham, Hamel, um, he never really excites me. He seemed pretty dull to me, but he was good in this one. And overall, I thought the show was good, but it didn't do well, so it got canceled. But there is a nice twist at the end that's really interesting. And all the powers they have are interesting. It's a lot of mysteries that were un were not told in the season finale, but it actually created more mysteries. But sad for us, those who like the show will not get a payoff because uh, they canceled the show. So nothing you can do about that. I heard rumblings that they're going to do a a, sh a shoot off into of that show into different characters and maybe you might answer some of those questions for us but overall i liked the tv show i like where it was going i liked the character dynamics between each other and i liked the twist at the end of the season finale so it gets four and a half uh it gets four for the show altogether in a four and a half potatoes for the finale it's that good so, if you like superhero movies, this is one for you. And please, after all the shows that I've talked about, if you have, I'd like to hear your opinions about it and what you thought about it. And I'll read that on the podcast, write in the comments of the podcast, or you can write me at James Salazar Media at gmail.com. You can follow me on all the social media platforms. Just type in James Salazar Media, I should come up on YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of them. And um, yeah, just reply what you thought. Hey, if you liked the podcast, give it a thumbs up. Um, hit that uh, like button. Um subscribe to the podcast to leave a review i would greatly appreciate it so my friends when the time we have left i would like to say if you find yourself on your knees because of the storms of life stand tall and take a look at that storm and say what my sensei jack burn always says hold on something wrong here do we got you hear that you don't hear that shoot Hold on, I gotta pause this. Man, stop. Take two. If the storm of life come against you and you find yourself on your knees, stand tall and take a look at that storm and say, what my J sensei Jack Burn always says, give me your best shot. Strike the music. Oh, whoa, there you go. Louder, louder. Anniversary. <laughs>